the macrophages are in a lot of in inflammatory situations. But the problem is here, when you have, a, I don't know, you see 30 kilos of fat invaded by a high number of macrophages is a big organ with a lot of macrophages there. But I agree with you that, in fact, maybe it's not perfect to target specifically the macrophages, but we must know that it's a problem. After that, you see, concerning the adipose tissue and the development of strategies, you see, for, to modify and to improve, in fact, adipose tissue biology, I think it's another challenge. It's another challenge because the challenge of the people is to reduce the amount of fat. The second challenge is to remove the amount of fat in the visceral area, more specifically than in the subcutaneous area. Don't forget that the subcutaneous fat you see, the peripheral subcutaneous fat is less morbid in terms of a pathology. And so I think we are still working hard to understand why, you see. I think the visceral adipose tissue has a very rapid dynamic. It's coming, but it can move. It can move after treatment. It can also be reduced after strong, regular exercise. Don't forget, it's possible to mobilize also this tissue. So... There is pharmacological strategy that, as you know, a pharmacological strategy is not easy because, in fact, uh, to remove fat, you have to mobilize the lipids and to, you have to use the lipids. Aniponectin is very interesting in terms of compound. Why? Because it is promoting the utilization of glucose and utilization of fatty acid by the muscle. I think it could be a nice target for that, to... To promote its release, for example, from the adipocyte.